Don't you f***ing make me cry. Oh! <laughs> Don't you effing make me cry. Um, I turned 10 years old on the first day of principal photography of Harriet the Spy. So it's really neat to have a diary because you could just like write down everything in it and no one will ever know. We are so excited, Michelle, because you are the new host of Meet Mary Murder, which is the true crime docuseries on Tubi. Okay, is it just me or is Tia's behavior looking very shady? What is the one thing that you want fans to know before they tune in? Like, is this for those people who are obsessed with all the true crime podcasts? Oh, yes, yes. Meet Mary Murder is something I am extremely proud of because yes, I am an executive producer. I host, I narrated it. We filmed it during the COVID. Mm -hmm. And basically what I want people to know is that we are honoring the memories and lives of the people lost. And I would absolutely love people to be watching it on Tubi because I myself am an extreme true crime fan. Really? She said this person over there is her brother. Riddle me this, everyone. Why on earth is Tia Young pretending to cops that Tim Lee is her brother? But Michelle, you've been the star of so many wildly popular and beloved projects throughout your career. And we want to give your fans some little flashback favorites with a little rapid fire rewind. Shake it up, take a sip, and wish for what you like most in the world. I Can you believe that this year marked the 25th anniversary of Harriet the Spy? What do you remember about that movie? When was the last time you talked to Rosie O'Donnell? Like, what first comes to your mind, Michelle? Don't you f***ing make me cry. Oh! <laughs> Don't you effing make me cry. Um, I turned 10 years old on the first day of principal photography of Harriet the Spy. Rosie was my biggest supporter. There was a lot required of me. I'm extremely grateful for the experience. What I'm more grateful for is people, when I do look at social media, which is challenging, mm -hmm. uh, them coming, coming in with, you inspired my life, you made me become a writer, all of those just beautiful things, you know? Um, but yeah, I turned 10 years old on the first day of principal photography, which was 1995. Yeah. And it came out in 1996, I believe. And next week I'll be 36. Crazy. So that's wild. I just really uh, was so grateful. Um, I auditioned, I think like 30 plus times and I'll leave you with that on Harriet is a, uh, I still have the striped t-shirt that I auditioned with in a memory box. It's supposed to be. Sad it's supposed to be. True. What? Sad but true. You can do it when the camera's off! <laughs> we'll, just, we'll work it out, it's okay. Have you talked to Rosie recently? We did connect on Instagram, which I don't really love to shout that out, but yeah. um, it was sort of like, Rosie, I got you. You got me. She protected me so much. So I, I have via like some sort of messaging, have I mentioned I'm antiquated, but via some sort of messaging just to be like, I love you. And it's so kind of crazy to me because I understand that like people don't apparently own a calendar, but I held her first baby, Parker, on set on Harriet and I'm like what the f balls because <laughs> he now like grown at AF is that mm -hmm. what the kids say these days okay <laughs> she still thinks I'm little miss nobody just her sister boy is she in for a surprise Buffy fans will always know and love you as Don Summers we love Don Summers. If you could go back and change anything about your experience on that show or your character storyline, what would you choose? 
I wish I stole more things from the magic shop. Actually, I just, I was texting with Sarah the other day and I was like, oh man, I should have taken a whole bunch of stuff. And she was like, you don't leave your house. <laughs> Which is arguably accurate via the COVID. Um, but she's like, and um, what I what I love from that experience is, you know, I've known Sarah for we got 30 years, something to that effect. Yeah, just shy. Um, and I rubbed her belly at her baby shower when Miss Charlotte was in there. <laughs> um, and now she's like, she, like she could practically be in college right now. I don't know. I love that you I can mean, measure your career know. in co-stars babies. Essentially, and <laughs> then Seth Green and I measure it in how many cats we're going to adopt. That's the way you want to play it? That's how we'll play it. No, I'm not afraid of you anymore. Huh? Well, you should be. Why, what are you gonna do? It's not what I'm gonna do, sweetie. It's who I'm gonna do it with. We of course gotta talk about Georgina Sparks, one of oh, the hey most girl. iconic combative personalities on TV. Um, we got to see a little bit from Georgina in the new Gossip Girl reboot and meet her son, Milo. What was your reaction when you found out what she's been up to and could we see you on that show? Well, what's so wild about that is it was actually like friends of mine that were watching the reboot and then like sent me, um, what are they called, uh, screenshots <laughs> of like me photoshopped into a lot of different photos. You were with like uh, the ruler of North Korea, Ed Sheeran, like random. I'll take Ed Sheeran. I'll take Ed Sheeran all day because I do believe he's actually a huge Buffy fan. So I'll take Ed Sheeran and his like, wait, what's the body song? Yeah. That was terrible. And now I'm never going to live this down. I'm in love with the shape of you. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Oh, God. But I was like, huh. That's me, but okay. You're like, and there's um, my son, Georgina Milo. is actually my favorite character that I've played because she's such an evil B-I-T-C-H that um, it was fun. Would you ever play her again on this new Gossip Girl reboot? I'll give you my canned answer for you. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. I coined this and because I am a writer, are you ready? All right, yeah. wait, where's the, okay. The camera is straight up. Okay, ready? <laughs> I'll never tell. You always did know how to leave them wanting more.